welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Zimmerman. I'm the founder of the Active Towns Initiative, and this is my platform where I share with all of you some of my video content that I hope inspires the creation of more people-oriented places that promote a culture of activity for all ages and abilities. And this is a classic video I produced a few years ago featuring Ross Chapin, the author of the book, Pocket Neighborhoods, creating small-scale community in a large-scale world. And it highlights the creative solution to producing more housing on smaller lots while still retaining the attractiveness of single-family homes, one of the most underutilized potential tools in the housing creation toolbox. I hope you enjoy it, and if you do, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others. And if you haven't yet done so, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to ring that notifications bell. Here's Ross Chapin now, introducing us to the scale of sociability in pocket neighborhoods in the Danielson Grove community. Enjoy. So you've got the, um, the, the patterns, uh, guiding patterns for pocket neighborhoods, and I just want to highlight a couple, and that is one, the scale of sociability. You've got a few houses coming together around a shared garden. There are layers of personal space. Um, we're in, we walked in through one layer. This is, that's the public street. This is the semi-public or the semi-private. Private. Private. And then between the sidewalk and the door are five more layers. A low hedge, a low fence, the private yard, the porch uh, frame, the porch, which is a room. And then the layering continues with active spaces looking out to this space and private spaces farther back and above. So the layering of personal space allows for um, community to about not be sort of affrontive in your face. Um, Julie, how's it like living here and what do you, what would you want to share, anything? Um, I love living here, in, uh, particularly because it's so beautiful. It's a real oasis and um, we have great neighbors. It's a nice um, small community. There are 16 houses here. Um, I've lived here almost 11 years now. When you have people first, uh, I think you've got more human scale, um, human communities. When you've got planning by policy and planning by economic um, uh, determinations only, then you end up with these uh, mindless, um, uh, no relation of scale, of number, you know, subdivision. And it's related to the fire truck, you know, or to the garbage truck. And not... Um, Which are necessary. Uh, they've got to be Services necessary. Are always necessary. They've got to be necessary. Yeah. But where are they in a mix? Is it the only mix or is it, you know, the thing? You know, Joan, you know, and she was over here and choked on a bone, you know, her first Thanksgiving. Um, she ran out of her home. It's like she, she was 75 years old or whatever, and she couldn't breathe. And uh, I've forgotten the name of the woman who lived here, and she saw Joan across the way and dashed across and had some idea of what was going on, pulled the bone out, and Joan just was just beside herself. She'd broken down. She's sitting on the front stoop, and she was, she was crying, and she said, had I not moved here, that would have been my last Thanksgiving. This part of the community was the first phase that we built. The houses were limited to 1,000 square feet. Um, it followed very much the same patterns that we did on some of our earlier developments. And then we did the next phase, which had a much tighter site. And we wanted to have um, a range of sizes of homes. So we've got a variety of household types here, sizes. And so those, those are larger homes, most of them, some smaller, one affordable, technically affordable. And that's having a greenway. So somebody was asking about, well, what should be the proper dimension of the common area? And, you know, you saw Danielson Grove, and I think it was 35 feet from fence to fence. This is probably 45 or 50 feet. Uh, this is 9 feet. Uh, down there is probably uh, uh, maybe 12 feet for some of it, and it widens. One thing is vary it. The other thing is that it doesn't matter how big it is if, as long as you have the layers of space that I talked about, the layers of personal space. This was... Um, 
between the shared area and the front door would be five layers. Okay. And it helps, it helps it feel more comfortable when you're on the porch and you're not just wide exposed. Yeah. And you've got landscaping. The landscaping is not just something that softens our architecture. The landscaping is integral and it's not just um, part of the aesthetics. It's, for me, it's part of the social dimension. It, it, it creates these, these um, spaces that have different uh, engagements to them. Just the way that you're on your porch here, now that this has grown up, you've got a little more separation and yet it's soft, you're open, you're part of it. What we're doing is we're edging up against a, um, a deep ravine with, with old big leaf maples and fir trees and pine trees and cedar trees. And uh, we didn't want to, to uh, forget it, we wanted to embrace it. We wanted to put ourselves right out at the edge. And when we come out here, you can see not only is the common house uh, at the edge of the green, facing the green, facing south, but it's got a back door to this magical woodland. Spectacular. Backdoor. Magical woodland. And then beyond that, we have this um, um, overlook that goes out probably 20 feet above the ravine uh, into the wetland area, into the steep area. And, but they allowed it, and you can see us going out and having this great overlook and connecting with the um, outdoors here. See, sensitive. This is this line. This line right here is saying that this is part of a steep um, site. This part of the wetland, and they working with the city. They allowed us to go out here because this helps people engage with the environment. Uh, so the environment is not just something we're protecting. Yes, but we're also appreciating, and there's an educational part to it. So I, you know, when I was a kid, I don't know about you, but I loved tree houses. I was up in tree houses, in trees more than I was on the ground. And um, built a few. yeah, I built a My few. Brothers. And so, you know, so this was part of me building a tree house. And uh, here, you know, here we are, a, a, an elder person with, uh, in a wheelchair could come here and they've got this outlook like they're at the precipice, you know, of this great ravine, which they are. Um, the building uh, back here, we um, uh, used the trees that we had to take out of the main part of the site. And I worked with a, uh, a miller to, um, and, and wood craftspeople to take these trees and bring them back. And, and that's the structure of the building. 